Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in the digital infrastructure industry, live from London, here at DCD Connect. And joining me today, we have two very powerful thought leaders. We have David Watkins. He is the Solutions Director at Virtus Data Centers, and Peter Miles. Peter is the Client Director at Virtus Data Centers. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank welcome. you. Good Thank you for having us. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you guys here today live from London on JSA TV. So, Peter, why don't we start with you? Uh, you have been expanding across Europe and the UK. Can you tell us about your growth strategy? Sure, absolutely. Uh, we, uh, we have uh, in <coughs> operation or in construction 300 uh, megawatts of IT load in the UK. Uh, last year, we uh, uh, ventured into Europe uh, and uh, are developing 300 megawatts of IT load uh, in, in Berlin across two campus sites uh, and currently looking to start a new project in, in Milan uh, and Madrid. So big plans to support uh, the, uh, the, the massive growth that we're seeing with uh, AI uh, and, and the broader uh, IT um, uh, industry. So very exciting times and uh, uh, a lot going on. Yes, there is definitely a lot going on in the data center there industry, is. especially uh, when it relates to AI yep. uh, and the significant growth there. Uh, so, David, why don't we talk a little bit more while we're talking about AI? Uh, tell us a little bit more about some of the major changes in data processing and how Virtus is ensuring that data centers are AI ready. So, our existing sites, we already support um, quite dense deployments, but what AI brings is is a, a compute and a power density that you can't support just with air. So we're, we're looking at the designs of our sites now. We're adapting them, both the existing sites we have and our future uh, design philosophies to support the, the the massively increased power density that AI is going to bring. It's going to bring with it. It's a change. It's changing the boundaries of where we deliver the service to the customer. But it's something we're very excited about and and. and spending a lot of time doing it at the moment. Yeah, I mean, we're super excited about it too. Uh, AI is everywhere and it's definitely one of the hottest topics here on the conference floor and across the world, really, um, and especially for our industry, which brings me to this next question, Peter, liquid cooling and its importance in this whole AI era. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's changing the dynamic of uh, the way um, operators uh, are, are building uh, their data centers to Dave's point it, uh, there are different pressures pressures put on uh, um, the cooling elements of it um, so we as operators uh, have got to build sites that that meet the requirements of the liquid cooling but at mm -hmm. the same time you know we've got to accommodate the broader uh, requirements of market as well so it, it's a fine balance between you know hedging uh, to, to accommodate the, the, the demands of AI but also the huge market that exists with data sovereignty and, and all these other elements as well. So uh, it's not a straightforward um, build a liquid cool data center. It's build a, a data center that's ready for liquid cooling. Uh, or, or, you know, more importantly, just build a data center that's right. ready for what's in front of us. Definitely, because yeah. the requirements are seriously changing. Absolutely, and you know the pressures on you know rack densities. You know, I think. Uh, we're delivering, you know, rack densities up to sort of 170 uh, a kilowatt, um, which, you know, is a far cry from our first day center, which in 2011, which would have been about 3.68 kilowatts a rack. So, you know, that you can Explosive. see, you can see yeah. the massive curve that's happened there. So yeah. I think the other, the other point on that that's really important is we've come from a world where we're building data centers to, to certain standards that are common and well known both by the operators and the customers. We're in a world now where it's changing very quickly and there's not the certainty on what we need to build and also more importantly, what our customers are actually asking us for. So there's a there's, there's a careful period that we're in now because it's, it's important we don't over engineer and don't over build for what's actually needed. But, it, yeah. but I, think, I think in maybe a year or so's time, We'll be back more towards the other way, where the requirements are better understood. But everything's developing very quickly, and we're all running to catch up. It's evolving, you know, so quickly, and they also need to be super scalable. 
right? Uh, but what does that look like uh, in a few years from now? We're not sure. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I think we, we, we certainly got visibility of the scale. I, I, I think, you know, scale brings, you know, huge amounts of investment. Uh, and the quantums we're talking about now, I mean, they're, they're, they're eye water. So, hence, when you are building a data center and, you know, there's all, always an element of speculation, uh, you, you know, the sort of numbers we're talking about to build, you know, I mean, our campus in, uh, in Brandenburg is, I, I think it's starting at 3 billion, okay? Uh, and, you know, it's not the sort of project you can get wrong or be glib within design. Right. So, so it, it's really, really important um, to, to understand uh, what's happening today, but kind of be prepared for what's happening in 24 months, because right. really, you know, everything's moving so fast. So fast. Yeah. And that brings me to this last question, which I would love to get your input on. Things are just moving so fast, especially when it comes to AI. Where do you see AI's role in the future of the digital infrastructure industry? Let's start with you. I think it's a huge opportunity. Uh, one of the challenges that we've faced, not just in the UK, but in other countries around the world, is historically, data centers have been clustered in certain locations in, in, in various different countries. One of the opportunities that AI gives is these huge large learning models don't need to be close to the source of use while they're just sat wearing away learning in the background. So it gives us an opportunity to develop elsewhere in country uh, where power maybe is less constrained, it'll bring inward investment into areas maybe that, that wouldn't be expecting that type of investment, more jobs, more skills. It, I think it's a huge opportunity for the industry. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, one of the things that's probably triggered is um, the acknowledgement of the importance of the day centre. I mean, the government last week uh, announced that it was uh, including it in the, the, you know, the critical infrastructure uh, a list for the UK. So um, that in itself um, is an indication as to the importance of it. But you know, the underlying thing with AI is you know these these are hugely power hungry uh, um, environments. I mean, you just have to look. I think uh, a Chat GBT um, search is about ten times. Uh, it uses ten times more power than a than a Google search. Okay, so you know you can see just in that very example that right, well. there's a huge increase. So underlying that is sustainability so you know where's the power coming from you know you know the power that we we, we buy now is uh, and the sites we invest in it's all coming from direct um uh renewable sources but even building sites you know um even things like cement uh, right. and, and you know and, and and the carbon that exists in that and solving for those problems because you know power is only one element but sustainability will be the key driver in uh, allowing AI to, to, to grow because of the sheer intensity of the power. Yeah, to reach its full potential. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. For sure. I mean, we wrote the book here uh, on sustainability with greener data. So many thought leaders there contributing to uh, what sustainability will mean to the future here yeah. of our industry. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? No, I, I, other than, yeah, it's an exciting time. You know, we're, we're, we're proud to be part of the industry. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much for having us. My pleasure. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. And for viewers that want to learn more, go to VertisDatacenters.com, right? That's the place. That's, That's the right. One. And viewers, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of JSA TV live from London here at DCD Connect London. I'm Buffy Harakita signing off for JSA. Stay curious. Stay connected and happy networking.